no plus. None. <laughs> Don't do it. Dang it. If you want to do a subplot, it's got to be a whole different story. If you find yourself putting a subplot in there because you just can't handle it not being in there, then that's the story that you actually want to write. So go write that. Okay. Hey, everyone. How do you write a story that wins a writing contest? Well, it starts with having a really great idea. And in this coaching video, I am actually getting coached by an author in our community, Sarah Gribble. She's the number one best-selling author of Surviving Death. And she is helping me workshop my story, make my story idea better. If you've ever wanted to win a writing contest, this is absolutely going to help you. But we are hosting a new writing contest at The Right Practice. If you want to get your story published, check out this new contest that we're hosting at The Right Practice. The theme is Happily Ever After. There's going to be thousands of dollars worth of prizes, and you'll definitely want to join us. Check it out in the link in the description. It's going to be a lot of fun. This is a chance to get better as a writer and get published, maybe win some prizes. We'll hopefully see you inside. All right, I'm here with author Sarah Gribble who is the number one Amazon bestselling author of Surviving Death and more than 30 published short stories. And I am struggling coming up with a story idea for a writing contest. So I decided to bring in Sarah to help me work on my idea and get it ready for this contest. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Joe. So this isn't the first time you've asked me for short story help. I feel like I'm going to be always asking you for a short story help, Sarah, for my whole writing I know. life. They're a little intimidating, you know, for, especially for somebody who's used to writing full-blown books, right? That's true. So my, That's my thing, though. All my stories are trying to be novels, and they just get out of control. So I'm yeah. hoping you can help me rein it in today. Okay. Let's start. Um, let's talk about the contest a little bit. So what is it? Is there a theme? So this is actually a contest that The Right Practice is running. And I'm going to be entering it as long as I can actually finish my story with your help. I'm going to be entering it anonymously as kind of a test. Right. Oh, and the theme is happily ever after. And the length is 1500 words. So about, you know, roughly 78,500 words shorter that I'm comfortable with. Yeah, 1,500 <laughs> words is tight. That is a tight story. And I know you love to try to put subplots in your short stories, and that's just not going to work here. A right? Yeah. All the plots. All the plots. Yeah. Okay, so have you done some brainstorming yet on what you'd like to write about? Brainstorming? So I've done a little brainstorming. You know, I'm thinking about writing a novel about kind of my experience as a younger blogger and specifically this one sort of conference thing that I went to blogging conference. I think whenever people go to work conferences, like there's some level of shenanigans that go on with some people. And maybe for the first time in my life, I was witness to some of those shenanigans. And it was with like 25 year old bloggers who were making to me ridiculous amounts of money. And also, you know, had crazy levels of influence with millions of people. And so, I don't know, it was just a weird, it was almost like a sun also rises kind of experience to me. So I want to write about a character in the middle of some of that. Okay. I'm glad you're going in a different direction because like people normally go with the first thing that pops in their head with ha happily ever after you're going to think, you know, weddings or fairy tales or whatever. So... You're going in a different direction, so that's nice. I'm going in the betrayal direction. Betrayal direction? Yeah. That's more up my alley than the, the wedding. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so how does this apply to the theme? I think it's going to be like a cynical wink at the theme, maybe. So Sun Also Rises ends with this character, Jake, saying to the other character that I'm forgetting the name of, she says, we could have been so happy. And he says, it's pretty to think so. You know, there's this cynical, like we, we were never going to be ha happily ever after, but there was a chance. So it's in that vein of like cynicism. Now that could be one option. The other option is maybe like the character is tempted and they see their friend give in to the temptation and then the character doesn't. And then the 
one idea I have is like maybe the other character blows their life up and that character, the main character doesn't, right? But then maybe they have just more status quo lifestyle. I don't know. There's options. Here's the problem of subplots, right? Right. Yeah. So you're going to want to focus more on one character though. That's an idea, you know, you're kind of splitting attention. If to find words, like you can't focus on more than one character until you get up to like, at least 8K. Yeah. So simple. You got to, not all this. It's so hard though. Don't. One character, one scene, or I mean, you can get away with more than one, but like 1500 words, you should probably keep it at one scene. Right. I wouldn't go with the other one. So the first option, what was going to happen in it? You didn't really say. You just said it's like. Oh, wait. so yeah, I have to decide still. I mean, it's going to have the cynical ending, right? Yeah. So you just really, your idea is the ending. Yeah. And the character. So I don't know what happens in the middle, I guess, that with that one. There's a character in what is to him a crazy situation. And there's, that's all. That's as far as I've gotten. And then there's cynicism at the end. Yeah. That's enough for, for a story, right? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> just write the last couple lines. Just cynicism all the way. That's it. It's on theme. There you go. Okay. So you have your ending. So you have an idea of the change that happens in this story, right? Yeah. So you know where he ends up. Or I'm assuming it's a he. Where he ends up. So where does he start? What's the change? And it can't be, this is another thing. Like I see that don't make it like some personality changing huge thing. It's just like a smaller. Okay. That's point. good. So I think he starts out really focused on growing his career, you know, and like going to these parties to grow, to make connections. And okay. Influence. And then at the end, he's like thinking all these people are fools or. No, at the end, let me think. At the end, it's more like he realized he's, he's a fool. It just oh, becomes yeah. more like pre at the beginning. It's like career. He's awesome. He's going to go build his empire. And then at the end, it's more like, oh, he's just a human with base, silly things. Mm. So he gets knocked down a couple of pegs. Yeah. All the pegs. All the pegs. All the way to the bottom. Right. <laughs> just straight down. <laughs> right. This really is up my alley. Okay. So you have the change then. So what are the outside things that happened to him? that caused him to realize this. Yeah, I think it's a temptation story, right? So I think he sees these people who are already living a lifestyle he wants, you know? Some of this is like from my own experience, obviously some of it is, you know, bigger, but I just like when I was first going to these events, like I was just getting started as a writer. I didn't know anyone, felt very lost. And there were people there who were making millions of dollars, literally blogging, which is crazy to me was crazy. Yeah. And I thought I would like to make that much money and do that blogging. So like he goes in expecting and trying to figure out how to make his career as a writer. And then it just becomes about a big party that these people are throwing. Right. Yeah. And it feels like he, oh, to fit in, to like get this influence, he has to participate. And then I'm not quite sure what happens in the middle yet, but that's as far as I've gotten. Okay. So I would think he would have to actually try to participate though. Not just, that's going to be the first thing is like he tries to participate and then that doesn't go well in some way. All right. Tell me more about what you're thinking about that. I like that. I mean, he's going in, this is what his goal is, right? He wants to get in with these people yeah. and his goal doesn't change just because they're partying, right? Like he's still going to want to try to achieve that goal, even if it does mean doing something that he doesn't necessarily want to do. So he's got to try to party with them and it just doesn't go well. He gets knocked down over that and you can have like one more thing happen. How do you think he would get knocked down? I don't know. You could do, he could get sick over like alcohol poisoning or something like yeah. that you could do that kind of stuff or it could be he ends up saying something stupid or somebody says something to him 
you know, that he doesn't like, or he just realizes he doesn't really want to be around these people because of something somebody said. I think it'd be kind of to have him do something stupid. Right. I don't know. It depends on how mean you want to, he can either say something that's like actually mean, or like he could do some cliche thing, you know, dance on a table or something like make a fool of himself mm. in front of everybody. Yeah. And then it's got to be at the end though. If he makes a fool of himself, it's so what happens with, okay. I think I have an idea. Okay. All right. Okay. So yeah, I mean, this is, I have to be a little bit careful about how I talk about this and some of it will come out in the story, but it was a weird party, right? We were copying different parties and then we're at this like really amazing house with all of these, this art on the wall. Some of the art was like, it, it involves some nudity and guitar players playing the nudity. It was weird. Like it's hard to describe on camera publicly but we're at this party and like people are just getting very very drunk and and again like well-known people and at least in this world there was this one moment where like all of these people are sitting outside around a table like having this deep conversation like telling stories and about writing and life and then there were people inside dancing and this one girl who is married to another guy. And I don't know if they were in an open relationship or not, but it felt like that. And she comes out and says, like to the whole party, she just wanted everyone to come in and dance. And it's like, come dance. I might have to edit this out. She's like, there are a lot of boobs and butts in here. Prominent blogger's name, come in and dance. There are a lot of boobs and butts in here. It was just a little like, that was a funny thing to say in that moment. And uh, so maybe this character does go in and maybe does, you know, something he might regret later. Yeah. That person. Yeah. I'm thinking maybe he does something and he does get in with the crowd. Like they think that he's cool then, mm -hmm. you know, and then there's like a step above that. He's like just to do something else. That's worse. And then that, because you only have 1500 words. So it can't be like, you can't go on forever but all night long about this. So the next thing would be something that he's like, no, this is, this is not okay. I'm done with this. I'm done with these people or done with the situation. Okay. What, what would be raise the stakes from that situation? I mean, no. So like I would, th something silly, I think would be the first thing. And then I think the stakes raised, like the something silly gets him congratulated with that crowd. And then the stakes raised would be him doing something like something with that person that he regrets or almost doing something with that person that he. Okay. Regret. I yeah. like that. That's great. Okay. So maybe like first he goes in and dances and like, it's a great dance. Yeah. And there's something like, that gets him attention and he's like, oh yeah. yeah, like this. And then like he goes and has a conversation with someone and they say, Hey, do you want to write for my blog sometime and or something, you know, yeah. the blogging world. Cool. Right. Yeah. And then, and then like he finds himself in a dark corner with that girl. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. And then how should it end? So the idea is he decides he doesn't want to do this. Right. Maybe he does it, but maybe he stops at some point. Yeah. So does he decide he doesn't want to be around these people at all anymore? Like this isn't the crowd for him or is it kind of like, I'm just not really going to, I'll, I'll work with them professionally, but I'm not going to hang out with them anymore. I don't think it's that. I think he thinks he is world weary enough to handle it. This character, not me, obviously okay. based on a true story, not real life. Everybody's going to be rushing to read your entry so that they can figure out what happened with Joe when he was younger. This is not what happened. For the record, okay. let the record show. Sure. <laughs> Don't sure me. Okay, so he's just kind of like thinking, oh, this is typical at the end then. Like talk talk more about the end. What, I don't like, know. I mean, what could happen is he says, okay, this makes me sick morally and maybe physically. And like, he feels like he has to, this is what he has to do to make it. So he has to re-up 
And that's the way to live happily ever after. I'm picturing kind of an ending thing of a like the next morning. Like he's got a, I don't know if they're in a hotel or whatever, like walk down in there all day or something. Isn't that another scene? You can manage more than one scene if you do it right. All right. I mean, if you can, I'm, I'm struggling to see how he's going to have while he's partying. I mean, he can have like a change of heart, mm. but I feel like it would most more likely he's, happen the next he's morning. Too, he's drank too much alcohol to have that kind of self-reflection. Right. What you're saying. Yeah. We have to be realistic here. Yeah. He's at least drank too much alcohol to remember the self-reflection if oh. he had any self-reflection. Oh. And if he's really self-reflecting, he's probably going to go cry in a corner or something. If he's that to that level of drunk, it, he's just going to get boring and weepy. I've been to a lot of parties. <laughs> yeah. More than me. Goodness. Okay. I hear what you're saying. So he, he needs to have some kind of Maybe it's the next morning. Maybe it's later that night, like he's walking or something. Yeah. Yeah. It could be later that night. He could be leaving the party or just went out for some air even. Yeah. I hear what you're saying. Okay. Okay. How do I make sure that this isn't too long? So it's probably going to be too long to begin with, but I would try to aim for like 2,000 words to begin with because then you can cut. The cutting... If uh, as long as you don't go, you know, 5K, that's way too long. But if you're around like 2,000 words, you can tighten up the language a lot to get yeah. down to that. Where would you start? Because, I mean, obviously there's a lot of context to this. Mm -hmm. And I would, probably that could be my... With him actually walking into the party and like people are already way drunker than he is. So he's got some catching up to do basically if he's okay. going to impress these people. And you can weave some context in you know, throughout with the, with the narration. We'll do giant chunks of backstory there. But I think this is a situation where you can kind of get the, the idea across in a few sentences of, you know, why he's there and what he's wanting. Okay. But I definitely would not start it with him, like arriving at the conference or anything like that. Like yeah, 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 yeah. This party. Arriving to the party. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What do you think? How can I make this story maybe win? Maybe place, maybe not get rejected in the first round. I don't know. Who knows what these judges went, man? I don't know. I was surprised when I came in, but runner up or whatever, the last one or whatever. I think you're already kind of doing this, like the kind of like, here's the theme. Here's what first popped in your head, but you know, you're stepping, stepping away from that. So that'll get their attention, period. I think that the issue that you will have with this one specifically, though, is you're really going to have to make sure that they're going to see it as being on theme. Mm. And like, I definitely think you can do like, you know, a wink at the theme, but don't let it stray like too far. Do you think I just need to quote the theme happily ever after? No, no. I should? No, don't do that. Okay. Half the people do that. And it's just, it gets a little old. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Okay. But some kind of tip of the hat toward that idea of happily yeah. ever after. Yeah. And I mean, the setup of this, you know, he thinks he's going to have a happily ever after. To be, like, that's the whole premise of the thing is when he get, gets in with these people, like he's going to be millionaire and well-known and everything. So like you're already getting there. You just at the end hit on it a little bit more. Yeah. I think. And don't add any subplots and don't add any more scenes and don't add a bunch of characters that you can't handle. And, you're, uh, <laughs> kill me. I know how you are. There's so much potential for subplots here. No subplots. None. <laughs> Don't do it. Dang it. If you want to do a subplot, it's got to be a whole different story. If you find yourself putting a subplot in there because you just can't handle it not being in there, then that's the story that you actually want to write. So go write that. Okay, that's good. That's good feedback. All right, this is super helpful. So now I just have to write it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That's the hard part. <laughs> I feel, no, I feel much better about this than I was feeling and have a good sense of where I need to go. Even if it kind of veers from the structure that we talked about, I feel like yeah. I have a better idea about how to pull it off. You're welcome.